This is gonna get kind of technical. This is something that needs to be talked about because nobody really talks about it. And it's something that's really easily overlooked in suspension design. We just don't really have to think about because the engineers behind it usually take care of it. It's very relevant to me. So let's talk about something. These cars originally that these steering arms are designed for, that is a rear steer application. Literally what it sounds like. The, instead of the steering in the front of the cross member, it is behind it or behind the center line of the wheel. Why that matters is because of something called Ackerman. And you can find really good explanations of it all over the internet, so I don't really necessarily want to dive into a technical discussion. In my application where I'm expecting to do autocross and things like that, it's extraordinarily helpful to have some Ackerman. These have pretty okay uh, Ackerman when you dial out the bump steer from the factory. So in the rear strut application, they angle in towards the center line of the chassis, right? Just like just like you see. See, now I've changed the game on myself and they point in from the front. Well, that's actually not advantageous. You actually want them to be the opposite. You want them to slightly point out. Some of you, you're just kind of sitting there going, well, why wouldn't you just switch the arm side to side? I can't. They only fit on the spindle one way. So this side's in line. And what that's doing is there is a uh, groove here that goes around a casting, uh, a part of the casting on the spindle. Here's my solution. So for these bosses on both sides where it's machined, so this is uh, forged steel, and then these are machined flat where the uh, bosses are drilled for the bolts to go through and bolt it onto the uh, spindle. What I came up with is actually kind of self-aligning. Because this is designed to sit flush, this should ultimately self-align. I'm actually going to take and mark equally from both of these holes, and I'm gonna make a cut across here, and then I'm going to bevel it just like I would have here. So I'll take this whole front, right, from this bolt hole, put it on that side, vice versa. That's gonna self-align it with the truck, and the only thing, or with the spindle, the only thing I have to take into account is my up and down. What will happen then is I maintain all of my lateral strength in here. There's some of you that watch through this and they're like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Ackerman simple. I want the inside tire to turn a little bit more than the outside tire. And that's because at slower speeds, it's going to help the truck rotate. Wish me luck. I think we're gonna have to scrap the bandsaw idea. Um, it's just not getting anywhere, even though it still cuts. I think it's just way too thick. But I think I'm just gonna have to take the cutoff wheel of the grinder and burn, baby, burn. <laughs> Okay, we're out in the shop trailer. You guys have been here a couple times. Uh, I just need to use the trusty bench grinders where I have it set up on my messy ass workbench. Like I said, we're gonna use this to just bevel this, but we are gonna leave the peak at the same so I can know my measurement and have obviously a nice tight point for the weld to bond into. We don't wanna move more material off of the center here really than we need to, So, but the, the bench grinder is the most efficient way to do it. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I had a more powerful one yet. I don't. There is Actually, an announcer coming really soon. It won't affect the truck build, but any subsequent builds, and trust me, there are some in the pipeline, they will benefit from that announcement. Let's grind. That's all for, uh, we want to kind of hustle because it's good to have a little heat in the parts when you go to weld forged steel like this, so let's go. 
we got them all beveled up like you saw and uh, they were so fucking hot I couldn't touch them for a minute because they were burning me through my gloves uh, so what I did is I bolted both arms onto where you know you just snug it down you can move them but they'll hold themselves uh, what you're gonna see me do is I'm gonna take this angle gauge uh, you know set it on the surface and get it the same for both I'm gonna set it on um, start with this driver's side and uh, set it on there uh, figure out you know what angle that is make sure I'm happy with it and then I'll tack this one and then go over the other side and make the angle match tack that one in remove them both weld them up and then I'm gonna have to stop for the night it's getting late okay so a um, couple good tacks on each one I just want to remove them not bang them into anything and put a you know a couple more tacks all the way around and then we want to start welding them out There you go. I welded it. That's it, we're not grinding them tonight. I'm gonna wrap everything up, shut it down. See you in a couple minutes. So I got a new chop saw and it's a little different than it seems like a number of people are used to. So we're gonna actually take some of this uh, 250 wall, so quarter inch um, thick. And this is inch and a half square tube. Steel tube, just mild steel, nothing crazy my abrasive cutoff saw so it looks like a giant grinding disc for those of you who don't know most people know that for metal chop saws well you do make carbide tip saw blades on special saws so basically they turn slower um, to cut this stuff it's supposed to cut it like butter i just got that in yesterday um so i'm gonna try it let's come into light so this is where the abrasive saw cut it off took forever though it's got some burrs on the edge whereas this one there's no uh, maybe a slight burr but you almost can't even feel it and I will say that the surface of the cut even though it looks rough it may look rough in the light uh, it's not it's like super smooth this is freaking dude life-changing that's quarter inch it literally was not even trying I'm sold Okay, we're back, and I did a couple things. The steering arms are on, and I actually am finding that trimming down my bump steer uh, kit I bought was a mistake. But I don't like this one anyway because it's not reverse threaded, so if you try and extend it, well, it just moves it. Anyway, if you know what a bump steer kit is, you'll know why I'm frustrated. The other thing that I just kind of tested out, just to kind of get a feel for where everything's landing, is my NASCAR sway bar. I, I talked about this a little bit before. It's not very, it's just very simple. It's their uh, heavy bar. I did get hollow um, with their bearings and the collars that kind of hold it in place. Um, and then I got these arms. That's about it. So not gonna be super fancy. I'm keeping that one super basic. So we're gonna chalk that one up to a win. I'm super happy with how this looks. We have a little bit of Ackerman from the looks of it. Um, but not a crazy amount, so this is fucking spot on. I'm so happy about this. It worked out just like I wanted. New day, new task, new progress, right? Uh, we made some good progress getting the fuel cell mount done pre- This is in my face. Previously. Um, today, we're going to take this perfectly good truck bed and cut some holes in it. Because that's what I did.
I'll leave the tape measure on it to hold it down while I set up an extension cord and a grinder and then I'll cut it out. Um, it's probably gonna be a little awkward so I don't know if I can include you guys. I gotta get the thing marked out actually first so I'm gonna do that, cut it out, I'll come back to you here in just a second once it's cut. Okay so that was kind of a fun procedure, not I uh, cut myself again um, because it's really sharp material now. So here you have it. There's a hole in the bed. I ran into two issues, one of which was there was like this funky heat shield for the exhaust that was here from the factory. Um, so I had to get rid of that. Wow, there's all kinds of burrs here. This is dangerous. The other thing to take into account is you can whoa, see that little hole there. Same thing there. This is actually the inside edge of a C channel that's spot welded to the bottom here. So I had to notch that out and cut it. So that part's done. Um, before I bring the bed in, like I talked about, while I have the space, I'm gonna go ahead and let's make the uh, uh, little angle iron tray that this is gonna sit in. Okay, so I set up my saw with the angle iron. So check this out. One of the things I really like this is you have the ability to quickly do 45 degree angles just by loosening this and sliding it back. So kind of sick. I need to go make the notches for the shocks, uh, shock mounts. Um, I'll just do that and then I'll try and film putting the bed on. Worst case, I'll fill you guys in um, once the bed is on. There you have it. So, uh, fuel cell fit in beautifully, no hangups there. The only thing I'm noticing here is the top of the shock mount is kissing the edge of this. So the inboard's good. I need to come back another, I don't know, half inch or so. And then I'll probably bring this out to this line, which is about another three quarters of an inch. Um, same thing on both sides. So on the bright side, my measurements were all completely and totally accurate. Um, nothing to worry about there you can see that the fuel cell does not stick up into the bed an astronomical amount compared to how deep it is so that's a win all in all this looks awesome um the only thing that you don't see in the bed right now is the battery because obviously i haven't done that yet i just not set the bed down like you guys just saw i'm stoked i love this i think it looks awesome um my biggest complaint it swallows 10 inch wide wheels. This is an 18 by 10 and I have a solid two inches of outboard clearance. So we could definitely go with a little more um, aggressive fit on a wider uh, wheel and tire setup. We could easily do an 1812 with a 335 tire. No problem, which is sick. I did not expect to have that much room. Um, so that's awesome. And it's pretty well centered in the wheel well, so that's a win as well. Uh, the only thing that I haven't done to the bed yet that I need to do is these holes were for this funky ass trim panel and I hated it. So I just need to kind of buzz these closed and make little patch plates that fit in here. And then I can just kind of clean them up before um, it gets painted and then wrapped. Oh, talking back to side pipes. Originally I wanted to come right out here and I can't because if you look, this line is just barely below the frame so to bring a three inch pipe out it would have like been half in half out and that costs a little bit of ground clearance on the lead up to the tire stuff like that so it would have been a disaster um, to try and just make it sneak under the frame I couldn't have come over the frame like a lot of guys do 
so the frame rail is just right in the way the bedside just doesn't come down far enough so that's why we did an axle dump i don't know if there's anything else to talk about thanks again for joining i'm sean see you next time bye